my channel. So today I have my February Fairy Loot unboxing and I also have my book haul. So these are all of the books that I have gotten since my last book haul in January. Now I will say there are a lot of books here but there's not as many books as I normally have. I probably have I think half of what I normally have in a book haul. So I restrained myself a little bit more this past month. But yes, let's start off with my fairy loot box. I've already opened this because I got this on Saturday and generally I film on Sunday, but I had my birthday celebration then. So I wasn't filming it till today, which is Tuesday. And I didn't want to have to wait. So I've already opened this. But here's a little sneak peek for you there. This here is the Morally Gray box nice picture. Here's some of the info. As always, for anything that I plan not to keep for myself, I will, I do have like a pile where I'm putting all of the stuff that will go into a future giveaway for when I hit 1000 subscribers. If you want that giveaway to happen, please subscribe. That way it will help me get closer to a thousand subscribers. But this first one is a from Blood and Ash mug. Which I do, I recently did read from Blood and Ash. I think that's actually going to be in my February wrap up. But I, I'm not a fan of this mug. So here's the mug. It's very pretty, but at the same time, I just don't think I'd ever actually use this. So this will be going into that future giveaway. And this was designed by at Avondale Art and it depicts Poppy, Castile, and Kieran. Then we have this really pretty pencil case and it's the same on both sides. It says the stars incline us they do not bind us by Chloe Gong and this is designed by at Chatting Nora and it was inspired by these violet delights. And I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I have another pencil case that I was using and I don't need a multiple. So I think I'm going to decide which one I like the most. And then the other one will go into the giveaway. I don't annotate my books and I've only been using the other one to hold like the fairy loot tarot cards and stuff. So it's still basically brand new. I'll just have to see which one I like more. And then the, the one I decide to keep, I'll keep, and the other one will go into that future giveaway. Then I got a snow oak pendant, and this is designed by at Jez Hawk. So they have this really pretty little silver pendant. And this one is also going to go into that future giveaway because I don't really wear fake jewelry. All of my stuff is either silver or gold, gold over silver, or it's gold. And this is also from a book that I haven't read. It's a reimagined replica of the pendant mentioned in the Black Witch Chronicles by Lori Forrest. Never heard of that book. I probably am never going to be reading it. Maybe someone who actually likes that series and would like this will win that future giveaway. So, so far, it seems like this isn't a really good box for me, but that's okay. This next item. Oh, look at this. I absolutely adore this. This is a foil print that has Jax and Evangeline from Once Upon a Broken Heart. Love it. I'm going to have to get this framed. It's, oh. It's a foiled art print. I don't know if it's supposed to be like this or if it's supposed to be like this. I'm not really sure. I'm guessing it's supposed to be long ways. Oh, I love that so much. This was designed by at Rosie Thorns 88. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we'll put that up there. So pretty. And then we have our tarot cards, which are here. We have two of stars and ace of stars. These are designed by at ours 28 and they are Taha, Quaid, and Amani. So this is Amani and this is Quaid and Taha from Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim. And that was, I believe, last month's book. These are so pretty. Alrighty, now we're getting to the actual book almost. We have the bookmark. 
I have this art print with a letter on the back from the author. We also have the fairy scoop. And the next month box is Eternal. It says in this box you can expect items inspired by the Bear and the Nightingale, Kingdom of the Wicked, and two fandom neutral items. The featured book is a gripping murder mystery set in a dark fantasy world where a killer is being hunted, an evil power threatens to devour everything, and two characters are forced to confront their pasts. So that sounds really good. And then for our book... Here's the pretty book. So this is City uh, City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. And this is completely different from the U.S. edition of the book. Completely different cover. And, like, there's a dinosaur on here. And I, there's dinosaurs, like, throughout, like, pictured throughout this book. So I'm like, is there dinosaurs in this book? I'm intrigued. Uh, but here are these ombre edges. Because, like, it goes from, like navy to like this pinkish color and then there's yet again a little dinosaur right there it says face your fear or become your nightmare and this actually has like um picture on the actual cover here again is a dinosaur don't know about these dinosaurs here is the front end pages and then the back end pages it's also signed by the author. Oh, this actually, this paper feels really nice too. Generally it's like thicker and stiffer. This feels very, very nice. Very nice paper. All right, so the book. Um, Gotham meets Strange the Dreamer, where a cowardly girl finds herself at the center of a conspiracy in a city where nightmares come to life. Sounds good. I wonder if this is a series or a standalone. Oh, the main girl character's sister became a man-eating spider. That sounds terrifying. I hate spiders. Good to know. I kind of want to read this one soon though because it actually sounds really good. That is everything that was in the fairy loot box. So let's continue on. I have a fairy loot book that I pre-ordered and came. So I have Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. So this is the pretty fairy loot edition. It's just teal sprayed edges. And I am sad because the first book has a ribbon bookmark and the second one does not, which... I was a little disappointed by that. And then it does have a picture under the cover, or under the dust jacket, I should say. It's got this little teal foiled flower there, and it is also signed by the author. I don't remember what this series is about. It's about a rebellion. And so if you like it where like, you know, the characters are rebelling, <laughs> this will probably be the series for you. I honestly have not read this yet. I haven't really looked that much into it either. I just know like, I have her first series, like the, what was it, the Beauty and the Beast inspired one, all on my Kindle. And I got the first book in a fairy loot, so I was like, I'm just going to keep getting them. That's why I got that one. And then this one looks so interesting. I haven't heard anyone talking about this book yet, but I saw it at Barnes & Noble, and I was just like, that's intriguing. It's called Cake Eater, and it's by Allison Dolan. And it's, like, inspired by, like, the Rococo era, like you know, Marie Antoinette and everything, but it's set in the year 3070. Well, here it says the year is 3070 and Marie Antoinette has just arrived at Versailles. Marie is an app sensation, a style icon and a maven of social influence with millions of followers, but here in the glamorous French kingdom, Franck, sorry, Franck kingdom, her job is simply to marry Louis Auguste. Unfortunately, Louis doesn't seem interested in Marie, making her feel lonelier than ever in this new country. Fortunately, Marie has a distraction. Opulent parties and decadent after parties abound in Versailles. But beneath the luxurious world lies a sinister underbelly. When a storm hits Versailles, it reveals the gilded world around Marie and Louis. For the cracked facade, it truly is. A hideaway for the rich and powerful, while the people outside suffer and starve. Determined to set things right, Louis and Marie must devise a way to right the wrongs of generations past and outwit those who want to keep them pawns in a deadly game. I'm guessing this is going to be like a sci-fi futuristic kind of like retelling of Marie Antoinette. And this cover is just so interesting. I want to read this one soon. This one looks really, really good. And then this next book, it's supposed to be one of the bookish boxes, monthly picks or whatever. And I, I'm not subscribed to that, but it sounded really good. 
It is a Dracula retelling. So this is Blood Orange by Karina Halley. And it looks like this girl who is a, a student of music studying under Dracula at this conservatory in Venice. And like, I think she keeps being reincarnated or something, but Dracula's staying the same. But she wants to like kill him and she's like a witch and he's a vampire. And it just sounds very interesting because I'm like, are we actually going to have like a student teacher romance in this? Is it going to be like enemies to lovers? Is she actually going to kill him? Like, I am intrigued. Like, Honestly, this just sounds like this book was made for me. I know some people have issues with like student-teacher relationships, but I actually kind of like that in books. As long as the teacher isn't like, like super old and he's not like, you know, a predator or something. But like if it's, you know, a hot late 20s, early 30s teacher and they're like attracted to each other, like with Arya and, um, oh, from Pretty Little Liars. What's the, what's the English teacher's name? I can't remember his name, but oh, I love them so much. And like, they were hot for each other before they knew that they were teacher student. You know what I'm saying? So this is kind of like the same thing because the girl's been reincarnated for a long time and she ends up being his student in this, I guess, time frame. I'm super excited to read this one and I'm hoping it's good. But again, it has a lot of trigger warnings and I've noticed recently that books that have a lot of trigger warnings, I'm like, eh, eh. so... We'll see, but it just sounds like everything that I would like in a book. And then for March, um, I, I have Book of the Month. So I chose The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. And this says, Amid the shrouded parlors of Victorian London, two daring women hunt for truth and justice in the perilous art of conjuring the dead. And this is also by the same person who wrote The Lost Apothecary. I haven't read that one yet, but I think I'm going to like it. So I definitely... I figured I'd pick this one up, plus the cover is also really pretty. And this one also was an, a pick for March, but I added it on, which is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. I believe this is by the same person who did The City of Brass. And I believe this is like a middle-aged pirate, female pirate, who has to go on another adventure or something like that. It says one woman's determined quest to seize a final chance at glory and write her own legend. I know a lot of people are super excited for this. It has a beautiful map in it. And yeah, I did, I like the City of Brass, but that one was a little too political for me. So since this is more like a pirate high sea adventure, I might actually enjoy this one more. And then because March is my birthday month, I got a free book credit and I decided to pick up The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I think this is like a dark academia book. It says, behind the closed doors of The Cloisters, shocking secrets and a mysterious deck of tarot cards spark a deadly power game within a close-knit group of researchers. And I'm pretty sure I heard someone say that this was dark academia, which... Dark Academia, I like the sound of and the idea of, but I just haven't found a book yet that I absolutely love that's Dark Academia. And then here is the bookmark, I'm a great judge of characters. But yeah, those are the book of the book, book of the month books I bought. Then we have Nocturne by Elisa, Alyssa Weiss. Weiss? She's beautiful. I've already read this one. I gave it four stars. This was such a good book. I mean, I was kind of, confused about exactly what was going on but our main girl character is an orphan and a ballerina and she has recently become the prima ballerina of this ballet house and she has this mysterious patron and who's like funding the ballet house and she has to do certain things and like this mystery is kind of like unraveled and it's it says that it's a dark fantasy romance but I didn't really get the romance in it but it's very beautifully written. If you like this, like Aaron Morgenstern's writing, that very flowery, very like for the vibes, kind of not clear exactly what's going on, but you're just here for the vibes, this, you'll like this. And I love Aaron Morgenstern's writing. I love this. It was so good. It was beautiful. I'm not really sure exactly the entire point of the book, but I still enjoyed, enjoyed the vibes. <laughs> Then I got Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong. And this is so cool. This is actually two novellas, but it's it's in a slipcase. How cool is that? Like what? 
And each book is actually its own little book. Its own little hardcover book, which is, I haven't seen this done before. Like, I, I ordered this from Amazon, and when I got it, I was like, wait, this is so cool. So, yeah, I'm, I just think this is the coolest thing. <laughs> and you just slip them back into the nice little clipboard. So these are like um, novellas that are for These Violent Delights and I guess also Foul Lady, Foul Lady Fortune. I guess one of them might also be like, I don't know if these books take place like in between those. Because Foul Lady Fortune is like a sequel spin-off series to These Violent Delights. So I'm not really sure. I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but I, I wanted to get it. So And then recently, one of my subscribers asked me like, what like YA books I'd recommend to like romance readers and one of them I said was The Fallen and I was like how many books is The Fallen and I realized I didn't have the very last book so I ended up getting Unforgiven by Lauren Kate this is the fifth and final book in The Fallen series and this is about Cam he was kind of like the dark angel kind of like the bad boy and it's kind of I guess it's kind of like his spin-off side story like it was very popular around like the 2010s ish area era to have like i guess the guy who doesn't get the girl ends up getting another girl or whatever like he gets his happily ever after too and i guess this is supposed to be like cam's happily ever after and i'm looking forward to reading this one because i didn't realize i didn't have it and i hadn't read it now on to z manga so i got something's wrong with us number 13 and I've literally been talking about this for months now. This is a 16 volume series. We have three more to go and then you won't hear me talk about it anymore. <laughs> then I got Yona of the Dawn 11 through 15. So I got 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And this is a historical fantasy romance, I believe. And it's for teens, so it's more like TV 14 or PG-13 instead of Mature, and I have not read this, but I was talking to my friend Jennifer about it the other day, and she said that she had watched the first season, and how amazing it was, and how she was obsessed with it, and she wanted more, and I was like, I haven't watched or read it yet, but I'm collecting it, <laughs> so I'm hoping to eventually get, I might watch the anime, because, I, like, especially with big, long stories like this, I kind of want to have the whole thing before I read it, which I know some people like to, like, buy, like, the first one or two to decide whether they want it or not, but you know what? If I'm not interested, this is such a popular series, I could end up selling it. I haven't really had a Sojo Beat series that I don't like, so I highly doubt that I won't like it. It might not be my favorite, but I'm sure I'll like it. Then I got Otaku Elf number five. This is so cute. It's been a little while since I talked about this one. This is about an elf who is an otaku, and she lives in a shrine, and this is the shrine maiden. And the elf is kind of like antisocial, kind of like a hikikomori, doesn't want to go out. All she wants to do is stay at home and play video games. And the shrine maiden tries to get her to go out and like socialize with the people that worship her, <laughs> pretty much. And it's kind of like a relationship, not a romantic relationship, but like a friendship relationship between the two girls. And it's really cute. It's really sweet. It's a slice of life. So, like, there's not really any big story. Like, I thought there was going to be when I first reading, I first read the first volume. I was like, oh, I wonder if this is going to, like, be a big plot that leads to this big reveal. But it, like, was over and done in a couple chapters. So, it's just a sweet, cute slice of life. There's not really much of a story to it. So, I've been reading this one as it comes out. Then I finally completed Say I Love You. So, I got number 15, 16... 17 and 18 and this is a high school romance and now that i have all 18 volumes this can go into the line of manga to read i don't know when i'm going to read it but i now have it to read it all i also got comey can't communicate number 11 and 12 and this is about comey who has social anxiety and she has it so bad that she can't speak and so she ends up like befriending this new guy in class and he kind of understands her and he kind of helps her make friends and it's really cute it's another slice of life there's not really much of a story to it 
I haven't started reading the manga yet, but I have been watching the anime, and it's really cute. I really like it, so I highly suggest this one. Especially if you have social anxiety or, you know, problems making friends and stuff, you can really relate to Komi. One of my favorite manga ever. Like, love it so much. Uh, Marmalade Boy. So, they are coming out now with collector's editions of Marmalade Boy, and so this has the first two volumes in one. It's being released by Seven Seas, and this is by Wataru Yoshizumi. And, oh, look at Miki and you. They're so cute. Oh, I love the series so much. So, like, some people might have an issue with this one. Like, if you had an issue with the whole uh, Mortal Instrument series and the whole could they be brother and sister, like, line, you might not jive with Marmalade Boy. Because Marmalade Boy, basically, their parents go on a cruise. And they end up switching partners. And then Miki and you have to move in together with their parents. Because the parents are like, oh, well, we don't want you to, like, be missing one of your parents or whatever. So we're just going to live as one big happy family. And at one point, Miki and you think that they might be brother and sister. And Miki's friend has a relationship with a teacher. And her best friend's in love with her. And there's all this drama. And, like, it is so good. I love this series so much. Like, I have all eight volumes, the Tokyo Pop versions. I also have all of it in Japanese, even though I can't read Japanese. And now I'm collecting all the collector's editions. I also have the whole anime series on Blu-ray, too. Like, this is one... I don't know if it is my favorite, but it is... It is in the top three, I can tell you that. <laughs> I love it so much. So, if you're okay with iffy, I guess, relationships... You might not like the, or if you're okay with, oh, what are they called? Taboo. That's what it is. This has ta all the taboo re relationships in it. You probably like this. If you don't like taboo relationships, you probably won't like this one. But I love it, so. And there's nothing inappropriate. I believe this is for, yeah, th this is like PG-13. So there's nothing inappropriate in it, visually. <laughs> and then the very last manga is The Girl from the Other Side, Deluxe Edition number two. So, yes, this is the final one. It's this beautiful hardcover. This, I believe, is an 11-volume series individually, but they combine them in this nice edition, so it's three volumes in one. Again, I haven't read this series yet, but I believe it's about this little girl who is from the other side, and she ends up wandering in where this creature is, and they form, like, this friendship. And I've heard it's really good... Again, I've heard only good things about this manga, so I'm sure I'll really like it. And it's also just really, really pretty. And I like pretty things. So yeah, that is everything for this haul. And thank you so much for watching. If you got all the way to the end, please leave me the stack of books emoji. And let me know what books you've gotten recently. And I hope you have a wonderful good day or night.